This lesson deals with convolution. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 11, starting on page 13. In our last video, we took a look at convolution. This is the process by which we find the zero state response of a system using the impulse response. To take a look at it in this first part of this video is the proof of the convolution integral. In general, y of s is equal to h of s times x of s from our last section. And we could write x of s as the integral from zero to infinity of x of tau e to the minus s tau d tau. In other words, the sense taking the Laplace transform of x of tau. Now we could do the integral from zero to infinity instead of zero minus to infinity because we have zero initial conditions in the zero state response. Now since h of s is not a function of tau, we could bring this inside the integral and let's rearrange the terms here a little bit. So here we've got h of s times e to the s tau, then times x of tau d tau. Now what is h of s times e to the minus s tau? Well, in chapter nine on page 12, we had the time translation property where we had e to the minus a s f of s. Here f of s is h of s and a is equal to tau. In chapter nine on page 12, we showed that that was equal to the Laplace of h of t minus tau, u of t minus tau, where a has been replaced by tau, and f by h. Okay, let's apply our definition of Laplace transform. You'll take the integral again from zero to infinity of h of t minus tau times u of t minus tau, then multiply that by e to the minus st dt. So from our last page, y of s is the integral from zero to infinity of h of s times e to the minus s tau times x of tau d tau. And you're putting in this expression here for h of s times e to the minus s tau. But we have the same integration limits here, so we could rearrange some of the terms that are here. So let me put the x of tau here and the d tau here and the dt over here and e to the minus st. You think of this integral from zero to infinity as the integral from zero to t and then the integral from t to infinity. What is the value of u of t minus tau? Well, it's equal to zero when t is less than tau, or you could write it this way, whenever tau is greater than t. If we break this integral part from zero to t and then from t to infinity, the integral from t to infinity is being multiplied by zero. We can simplify this then to the integral from zero to t, h of t minus tau times x of tau d tau. Then comparing terms here, this is then the Laplace transform of this term. It be the integral from zero to t, h of t minus tau, x of tau d tau. That's what we designated last time on page 11, for the shorthand notation for the convolution integral, which in other words that h of t is convolved with x of t. And so then y of t is the inverse Laplace transform of y of s, which is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of, of h of s times x of s, and that's equal to our h of t convolved with x of t. The time domain convolution is useful if the Laplace transform doesn't exist or we don't know its value. You'll see examples like this in signal processing. Let's do another example. Suppose we have a linear circuit with an impulse response that's equal to two e to the minus t times u of t. Let's use the convolution integral to find the zero state response if now x of t is t times u of t. Taking our definition of the convolution integral, we'll take the integral from zero to t of h of t minus tau times x of tau d tau. Taking our h of t and replacing t by t minus tau, we have two times e to the minus the quantity t minus tau and then x of tau is just replacing t here by tau times u of t. We're taking the integral from zero to t. So the value of u of t is equal to one. Now, since two is not a function of tau, neither is e to the minus t, we could pull it out in front. We're left then with the integral from zero to t of tau e to the minus of minus tau, which is e to the plus tau d tau. What's the integral of this term right here? Well, I looked it up in the math handbook, or you could do integration by parts, but the integral of x e to the ax dx is equal to e to the ax over a squared times ax minus one. In our case here, a is equal to one and x is equal to tau. So we have two times e to the minus t, and then this integral then would be equal to e to the tau divided by one squared times tau minus one and then evaluated from zero to t. So plugging in tau equal to t and then tau equal to zero. So you have e to the zero and then zero minus one. So multiplying this out then we have two times e to the minus t times e to the plus t. So if we add those two together, you get e to the zero, which is equal to one. And that's gonna multiply then t minus one then we also have a two times this term over here times e to the minus t, but e to the zero is equal to one and then the two minus signs cancel. So I get a plus one times e to the minus t. So y of t then is equal to two times the quantity t minus one plus e to the minus t. This is true for t greater than zero. And again, we did all of this in the time domain. Since we could do the convolution integral only in the time domain, it's possible to do it graphically. Let's take this last example and do the following process of reflecting, shifting, multiplying, and integrating. The terms we need for the convolution integral are x of tau. So we take our x of t, which was a ramp times u of t, which means it's zero for t less than zero, and then has a slope of just equal to one plotted versus tau. 
h of t was equal to 2 e to the minus t times u of t, so again it's 0 for t less than 0, has an initial value of t equals 0 plus of 2, and then we exponentially decay with e to the minus tau, plot inverse is tau. Now we need to find h of t minus tau, so let's find h of minus tau. It's simply being a reflection along the y-axis, so where we had a plus, we now have a minus, so just flipping this over, we get an exponential coming up here and then going back to 0. And then lastly, we need to shift this by a value of t, so it moves it out over here, and we're going to multiply that times our x of tau, so it's going to draw that on the same graph. The function x of tau is 0 here, so anything times 0 is 0, and likewise over here, h of t minus tau is also equal to 0, so it's 0 here, and we're going to multiply these two. So I've got a ramp times an exponential. I'll be even more abruptly changing in this interval from 0 to t. And then our convolution is the integral of this, which means it's just the area of it. So that would be what our y of t is. Now under this interpretation, we can think of the impulse response as a weighting function. When integrating the product of h of t minus tau times x of tau, the impulse response tells us how much weight to assign the previous values of the input. You can find applications like this in communications and digital signal processing. These are some more properties about convolution. 